Tamara Chase. I'm the founder of Chase Dance Company. Now I'm putting out these videos and this content for other young dancers who are looking to take the next step in their dance career to something that's a little bit more stable and uh, steady income for an older dancer. I didn't have very much help um, figuring out the pros and the cons and what works and what doesn't work when starting your dance studio. It's all just been through trial and error. So I hope me just getting on here and talking to you about the steps that I took to start my dance company and studio will help you in, in your process. So the next step that I did when starting Chase Dance Company was to start building my database. Here this week's lesson is about building your database and your social media platforms. Now some of you might be asking, well, why are we building a database when we don't even have a studio location yet? How can you put your say you're opening this dance studio but then you know you're not you're not sure where you're gonna go if you're gonna find the right property or how it's really gonna work but this is the smart thing to do first okay you, you want to think about profit and raising awareness first before you start adding on expenses and we're gonna get into property and those types of topics a little bit later probably in the next video but today Let's talk about spreading the word and raising awareness and building your database so that eventually you can sell to those people and those clients. So the first thing in our database that we want to build are, is our email list. So you want to sift through all of your current inbox emails and start copying and pasting them into your list of contacts. So I have an Excel sheet that um, just lists all of my, my leads or my database inquiries and everything and they're all sectioned off so that it's organized in different categories, which we'll get into. Um, and then I also have all of them listed into my Gmail contacts. So they're automatically in Gmail and also separate in an Excel spreadsheet, which you can convert both to a CSV file and import into MailChimp and any newsletter service that you want to en end up using in the long run. So what we're going to do first is we're going to sift through all of our current emails that we have that is anything discussing dance, okay, dance classes, any workshops that you've given and you've connected with people, any business networking events that you've connected with people, start taking down all of those emails from your inbox and start listing them in a nice Excel sheet. And then also adding them into your Gmail contacts. You can set up your categories the way you prefer, but I have um, South African parents, South African students, I have inquiries and I have current Chase Dance Company parents, I have dance like a dancers list from all of my contacts that I do dance workshops and outside dance events, they all go into that list and then I have my business networking list which is people that I've met through chamber meetings or just local business networking events, all of those business cards that you end up coming home with, they go into that list. Then I also had a section that was specifically from my blog which we're going to talk about just now. Um, I had over 7,000 emails alone just in my blog section and that was, that was pumping pretty well and that's something we'll talk about now too. You want to make sure you're always asking for people's emails after you meet them. Everywhere you go, anywhere you go, if you connect on a dance related level or you think that you can add value to them, they can add value to you swap business cards and get their email address to add to your database. You can also look at list brokers online. I have not done this yet, but it's something that I'm looking into right now. So you can actually purchase an email list from a list broker from local consumer statistics that fit your target market in your location. So that's also an option if you're looking to build your email list to get new students and for trial classes. Now you can't take, you can't purchase the broker's list and then send out a mass email, that's spam, but you can individually contact, go down the list and contact individually via phone or email saying, hi, you know, I'm new to the area, I'm opening this new dance school, would you be interested in coming in for a trial class? These are what we offer, this is how our program's different. So you can go down the list individually and contact each person, which is not spam, that is um, ethical and legal. Uh, so this is something that I'm looking at doing right now, and it's also something that can be outsourced. You don't have to sit there and do it all yourself. It's, that would be really time consuming, and your time as a business owner is much more valuable than going through leads and trying to get trials through your door. So definitely outsource that step if, if buying a list through a list broker is an option that you're considering. 
You can also have a landing page on your website, which is something that we have. So if you want, for an example, you can head over to chasedancecompany.com and have a look. Uh, we have a little bottom box on the right bottom hand corner um, stating to come in for a free trial class. Please enter your contact details and we'll contact you with, with those details to trial a class. So that's the most common um, example for a dance studio is to offer a free trial class in exchange for their details. You can obviously come up with another offer um, if you would like or if you have a different idea, go for it. But that's just something simple that a lot of dance studios do have and it just keeps track of who's coming to your website. So you can keep all of those um, metrics and statistics to help you with your Facebook ads and your target market a little bit later when we get into social media boosting and ads. Speaking of social media and ads, another way that I build my database is to actually Facebook message people that I don't know. So I, I call it screening um, because I know that my dance studio is not for everybody and that as, as I'm sure the same thing for you. We're all different, we all offer different classes and we all want to attract different clientele. It's natural and that's the only way that a, a dance studios are going to be able to compete and work alongside of each other is that we're all different and it's a great thing. I'll screen through mom groups on Facebook or local yard sale groups or neighborhood groups on Facebook and I, I just look through their members, look at their profile pictures and just see like is this somebody I would want in my studio. Click on their profile, do they have kids, girls, boys, happy family, sad family. <laughs> You're looking at all of these things and you decide if you want to contact them or not. So I've had pretty good success with this, so I have to say it's worth it's worth sitting on your computer for a couple of hours sending out these messages to people to get even just two to three loyal lifelong um, clients of yours. So back to the email, we started wandering a little bit astray there, but back to the building your email list. You can also have lead gen boxes made and put at local businesses in your area. So you can have your nice lead gen box with index cards. We can have an offer on it. They enter their details, put it into the box and go on with their lives. And you can collect these emails weekly, monthly and enter those into your database as well. You can use these emails for, for clients for future classes, for online videos, um, educational material, something that's going to add value to their lives and, and hope that in some way these people become your clients. But for now you just want to build that database and add value, add value, add value. So you have your database, you've now approached people saying that yes, we are opening this dance studio, would you be interested in getting receiving more information from our newsletters and coming in for a couple of trial classes right so they now know that you're opening a dance studio and they're aware of what's happening next you want to start your social media social media can be really overwhelming there's so many platforms that a lot of people don't even know where to start or what to do but i can tell you where to start your target market is going to be students and parents both Mostly parents, because if you're a new dance studio, you really want to focus on starting with your pre-group um, first, because those are going to be the ones that are going to grow with you and become lifelong clients with you. So we're focusing more on pre's, and they're obviously way too young to be on social media, so you're going to be targeting their parents. And we need to find out where do parents hang out on social media. Obviously the most common ones are um, Facebook and Instagram, that's a no-brainer. Pinterest, there's a lot of moms on Pinterest. Um, I don't think too many moms are into Snapchat yet or Musical.ly. Uh, Nextdoor is a, is a really great app for community moms and local happenings. So I would say what you want to do is you want to find the social media platforms that you know how to operate, that you feel comfortable with, and start building your profiles. So Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Those would be my first three. If you're feeling ambitious and you can handle four social media platforms, then I would recommend Nextdoor as well. You want to be careful not to have too many platforms where you're feeling overwhelmed and you have terrible online presence. Rather focus on just one, two, maybe three platforms where you can have really strong profiles and a really strong 
presence and conversion rate with those social media platforms versus being scattered all over posting once every month yeah so focus on three one two three maybe social media platforms start building your profile and raising awareness about your dance studio and what you are you are planning to offer to your community so that was a lot of information and different steps in such a short time frame Please feel free to just rewind, go back, and re-listen to get all of those details on building your database, categorizing your database, and starting your social media platforms. This is your next step for starting your dance studio. Next week, I'll be back with you talking about your location, which is also going to be really important, and that's your next big step, is finding out where to start your dance studio. So I will see you next week on how to start your dance studio from scratch.